In this video, we will discuss the GZK limit, which is an upper limit for the energy of cosmic rays coming from faraway sources. It is named after those three physicists who calculated this cutoff energy in 1966. In short, this energy limit is due to collisions of cosmic rays, that is protons, with photons from the cosmic microwave background radiation. Even if there are some very high energy protons far away coming towards us, they will collide with CMB photons and produce pions. This reduces the proton energy by around 20%, and this reduction of the kinetic energy happens until some specific energy is reached. This means that protons below the GZK energy limit can reach us, but those with higher energies lose their energy again by making pions along the way. Now let's go into more detail. The reaction process looks like this. A proton collides with a cosmic microwave background photon. This creates a delta plus particle, which quickly decays into either a proton and a pion or a neutron and a pion. Our goal is now to calculate the minimum energy such that the proton can just produce a pion. All other protons below this energy can reach us without losing more energy. For our estimation in this video, it is actually sufficient to just consider the first partial reaction, where a proton and a photon combine to a delta baryon. During this collision, four momentum must be conserved, which looks like this. If we square this relation, we can make use of the fact that the squared four momentum yields the mass of the corresponding particle. So the proton mass here, zero for the photon mass here, and on the right hand side the delta mass. Next, for the inner product of proton momentum and photon momentum, we can use the magnitude of the momentum vectors and the cosine of the scattering angle. For photons, this is exactly equal to their energy. And for ultra-relativistic protons, we can approximate their momentum with their energy as well. This means we can rearrange this equation to yield the proton energy, which now depends on the proton mass, the delta mass, the CMB energy, and the scattering angle. For the first three quantities, we can use experimental data. And as for the scattering angle, we get the smallest energy if we choose theta to be equal to pi, because then one minus the cosine is as large as possible. Finally, we have to include the speed of light to the power of four in order for the units to be correct, which yields a minimal energy of around 2.4 times 10 to the power of 20 electron volts. A more detailed calculation, which includes the thermal distribution of the cosmic microwave background photon energies and a mass distribution of the delta-1232 resonance, yields an even slightly lower bound of 5 times 10 to the power of 19 electron volts, which is around 8 joules. Just to be clear, this is an insanely high energy for a proton, which would have a velocity of 99.999 999999999999998% of the speed of light. This GZK bound was experimentally observed in 2008, although higher energy cosmic rays have also been reported. The question whether the GZK limit has been broken, or if there is another explanation, is called the GZK paradox or cosmic ray paradox. For instance, one paper suggests that a possible explanation of the GZK paradox is that at such high energies, quantum gravitational effects might be necessary. This paper calculated the GZK limit using loop quantum gravity and indeed found a higher limit, which would allow cosmic rays with energies above the usual GZK limit. But that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.